The Western Pacific last year was certainly an interesting one. We had one or two strong storms. We can't even really remember what happened that season. I'm already starting to get a little bit of a blurred head. But looking into 2024, this is what we've got on tap. Now we are expecting quite a few storms this season. It certainly doesn't look like it's going to be a dead season, uh, but obviously it is looking like it will be a little bit below average because it looks like we're heading out of the El Nino and entering a La Nina, which is not very favorable for the Pacific in general. Storm I remember most from last year was a Typhoon Koinu, which was of course threatening the Hong Kong region for quite a while as a Category 4 storm. And we might see more of the same this year as a matter of fact, because Hong Kong region is very high up on the priority list uh, for potential impacts this year, looking at climatological uh, projections and model projections as well, looking out towards this year. Well, let's take a look at the numbers. We are expecting for 2024 this year in the east, in the Western Pacific, 24 tropical storms, nameable, uh, 14 typhoons, and seven major typhoons this year. What can we tell you about these storms then that we're expecting? Well, let me read the key messages. Current indications suggesting that activity will be much enhanced of the eastern coast of Luzon in the Philippines down to the island, the offshore island off the east there of Catanduanes. We're expecting very large amounts of activity in that zone, uh, which could also, of course, implicate the Metro Manila region. And that will be particularly a focal point there in the late season. Now, there's also a very strong climatological signals, as I alluded to, for the Hong Kong region and for the southern tip of Taiwan. Strong recurving storms are also likely to affect the Ryukyu Islands of Japan and the southern coast of the main islands of Japan and large parts of Kyushu as well. Uh, we could see some pretty strong storms doing that. Long-range modelling currently suggesting that the tropics will be very stifled, deep tropics at any rate, during the peak season, August, September time. That probably means that we'll be seeing more formation further north. Now those who know the Western Pacific well will probably know that in August usually we tend to get a very sloppy scenario, we'll just get storms forming everywhere, and it looks like if that, well that probably will happen, and it will happen more further north this year. Well what does that mean? Well, it means the Philippines will probably get a break, as well as the uh, South China Sea region, but areas further north, such as Taiwan, the eastern coast of China, and Japan, and maybe Korea, uh, will be seeing much more activity during the peak season than usual. That's certainly what it looks like anyway. Elevated temperatures further north as well mean that storms are likely to track further north without turning post-tropical. Uh, and so that could open into play places further north uh, through the whole of the Korean Peninsula and on through the whole, well, almost the whole Japanese islands as well. Uh, it's not unheard of to have tropical storm landfalls on the island of Hokkaido, and certainly that is a possibility this time around as well as in North Korea and also in the very far northern reaches of coastal China. So the numbers this year then. Once again, this is every month. It's not really set in stone by any means, but it's just a little guide, low confidence. Two named storms in May by the looks of things, two in June, four in July, five in August, four in September, four in October, two in November, and one in December, making up the total prediction of 24, which is three below the long-term average, which is 27. As for tracks, well, we could be seeing quite a lot of activity then uh, through the channel in the Philippine Sea, as we often always do, uh, but maybe a little bit further north than usual this time around. So we are really concerned about Luzon particularly, Catanduanes, uh, the northern Visayas region northwards basically in the Philippines, moving northwestwards into the South China Sea, and then possibly going on to affect Hainan, the Gulf of Tonkin, and the coast of Vietnam. We could then see a secondary channel, or maybe all part of one, all the one same thing here, uh, where we could see the southern tip of Taiwan getting seriously impacted by storms moving westwards, and also maybe moving northeastwards from recurvatures in the South China Sea. Certainly can't rule that out, as well as uh, more recurvatures moving towards Hong Kong, and maybe storms sliding in from the east, like Koinu, and then affecting the Hong Kong region. 
Further north, we might get shorter tracked storms that form in the higher latitudes, around about 20 degrees north in the subtropics, and then moving on into the East China Sea, probably through some of the southern Ryukyu Islands of Japan, and then making landfall in a region of eastern China. I think it's Fujian, uh, certainly south of Shanghai, between uh, Shanghai and um, Fusu and Xiamen. Uh, that area is one that we've really got under the microscope this season by the looks of things for potential impacts. And then finally, probably the longest tracking storms would be things that form in the low latitudes, maybe over Micronesia, maybe near Yap, um, maybe even closer to Guam, moving westwards and then dipping up northwards, maybe at the last minute before reaching the Philippine Islands, and then moving through the uh, Ryukyu Islands and then uh, affecting large parts of Japan. That's probably going to be the scenario for the long tracking storms, um, unless we get something that skips it and uh, continues to move further south. It doesn't look like we're going to get storms forming particularly far east. If we do, it will probably be quite soon, in the next month. Sometimes that can happen in the early season, where we do get systems forming way out over the open ocean, and we don't really see it as much in the later season or peak season, as it were. So keep your eyes out for maybe some potential in the next few weeks near the Mariana Islands even, or possibly towards eastern Micronesia, and maybe another little spot in the northern Philippine Sea uh, heading up slowly towards Japan, but probably won't get there. So that's our tips for the Western Pacific. Let me just give you a few other little totals here. So we're giving a red zone 45% chance of a storm, significant storm conditions for some parts of southern Japan, the southern tip of Shikoku, the southern part of Kyushu, and the northern Ryukyu Islands. And then you've got these massive, really high zones, a channel moving through Hainan into possibly into Hanoi and Haiphong, Vietnam, uh, where we've got 60%. The Hong Kong region, we're looking at 80% of a significant tropical cyclone impact, as is the case with a massive chunk of the eastern coast of Luzon. Having said that, that zone is literally the world's capital of uh, tropical cyclones, so it's not that much of a surprise. But nonetheless, I would say it is, compared to average, an elevated risk of further activity along the coast there and can't rule out a very powerful landfall even look at the quiet seasons like 2010 uh, where Typhoon Meggy made a category 5 landfall there in Luzon. Speaking of which the analogues, well I can tell you the two best analogues right now are 2010 and 2016. Uh, 2016 featured quite a few other storms as well, of course Nipartak, it had really quick, uh, late season, but it really uh, busted that very quickly with uh, Typhoon Nipartak, which was Category 5, straight off the bat, moved into Taiwan, and then also in 2016 we had quite a few strong storms impacting the Philippines that year as well, so looks like we could be seeing a little bit more of the same there in that regard. So hopefully that's been helpful, and once again we are expecting 24 tropical storms, 14 typhoons and 7 major typhoons.